Hello there, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'll be working on a commission for a super sweet client who was looking for a doll to reflect the look of her beautiful goldfish, one of which you can see in the thumbnail. So today's video will be a full process video where I'm starting out with the rerouting and then do the face up as well as the uh, clothing and the styling of the hair. So here I'm just measuring out the hair. I'm using some alpaca yarn uh, like I did in my previous video and separating the pieces and just rooting them into the doll. If you have any questions on this, I do have a rerouting video. I've updated my process a little bit by using a driver to scrape out the inside, which helps a whole lot. And then um, using hemostats to remove the hair because they're so much thinner than a and, and than like tweezers or a um, needle nose plier so you'll do better with that than and, and do less damage to the neck so here i am with my face up process as usual i am starting out with the white of the eye and just defining the shape with some black uh, upper lid liner and laying in the waterline. So like I said, the Laguna is the perfect doll for this because of her features. These fish have these big, beautiful googly eyes and chubby little cheeks. And so I thought she was perfect for this, but of course she's not orange, so you'll see me working on that correction there. I wanted to create sort of a gradient effect with her lips and make the upper lip a darker orange and the bottom more of a golden yellow. So using my pan pastels, I'm working that out. And then I'm starting to lay in the skin tone. If you're going to try to change the color of the skin of a Monster High doll, you'll need to use a ton of Mr. Super Clear to avoid any uh, removing the uh, scraping of the paint later on. You can get some scrape marks or um, it can kind of peel if you don't seal it properly. Even after that you need to make sure that these dolls are definitely only collector dolls when you color the entire uh, body or change the color because playing with them it's definitely going to damage that paint. So I do several layers. I'm sort of trying to get an ombre effect of the orange on the back and then moving to more of a golden yellow in the front. And to keep that highlight, I keep uh, blending out with some white. I'm using my trusty paintbrush that I have cut down into sort of a stencil-like brush where, and that's how I do most of the work around the, the nose and just little detail shading. And there I was using my Prismacolor pencil sharpener. And I try to put all of the supplies that I use in the description box below, so check that out. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer every one that I can get to. Once I've blended out the lip like I want it uh, with the pastel, then I try to define it with some pencils, with the watercolor pencil in the same or similar color. And here I want to give sort of that ombre effect to the ears. So here I'm using three different shades of golden uh, and yellow effects. Uh, I think the name of it, it's, I've used it several times before, but it's just like a uh, metallic pigment. And so it gives it a lot of shine.
Some of the client's goldfish were blue and they were so beautiful and so I thought, well, let me put blue in the eyes and then do the orange pupil. These are such beautiful fish and it, really creating this doll made me want to get some. We talked some about how the, they have personalities and I'm just really looking forward to purchasing some for myself after this doll. I've always loved this particular kind of fish and so I kind of tried to capture the, the big eyes with uh, to reflect the characteristics of them. Trying to keep those highlights with the white pastel and blending it into the yellow and orange. I did this in several, several layers with Mr. Super Clear using quite a bit of that product. So once I was happy with the face, I wanted to add some eyelashes. I checked out all of the colors that I had. I thought maybe I'd do these red ones or some white lashes, but to really make those eyes pop, I realized that the black ones were really the best to hit that mark. And the reason I went to the eyelashes first is because I wanted to determine what kind of lower lashes to draw. Here I'm adding some highlights to the eyes using a nail, using a thin paintbrush for some of them as well as a, a nail detail brush or daughter. in with some highlights in the eyebrows and I have to apologize for some of this background noise I'm living near a speedway um, like a race speedway and you can hear some of the cars so I, I hope it's not picking up too badly So before I add the eyelashes, I'll bend them to the shape of the eye, just so that when I put them into the glue, I can just set them right on the eye with little effort. And then I'm just using like a nail tool to push them down to stay in that shape once they're added. Once that's dried, I add the gloss to the the eyes and lips and I also added some gloss to the fins and the webbing on the hands just to give it sort of a wet look and I guess off camera <laughs> I did the bubbles I added some bubbles to her body and also later after speaking to the client we decided to add a little bit of scales uh, to the thighs and the forehead so there should be some pictures on Instagram if you'd like to see how that turned out, but it was just a little bit more detail after I'd already completed this video. So here I'm going through, I curated some of my products that I thought matched the coloring I was looking for for the doll. I picked up some beads and some, uh, some of this vinyl that I had pre-cut in the shape of my go-to uh, shorts and top. And so I cut that down a little bit for a little bit sexier look to show more of the bubbles and things that I did to the body. Um, but those are the colors I kind of, if I'm working kind of organically, I'll just go through all of my supplies in, in the colors that I'm looking for and just kind of uh, just curate a, a bunch of things that I may possibly use and then just see what works. 
and so that's how I put this one together and I went with the orange shorts as you can see and then I cut down the corset to just sort of like a little bralette. I always start by sewing the crotch area so um, I can fit it to the shape of the body because I use this pattern for uh, Monster High, Ever After High, and, and the newer Monster High dolls, so they're all a little bit different in the hips. So I'll sew it down at the bottom first, and then I'll fit it to the doll and, um, and then cut it to shape. And these ones fit pretty much perfectly. I wanted to leave them a little bit of room because I'm going to add some trim. And then I cut down the corset because I just wanted it to be um, sort of like a little bralette. So we could see those bubbles that I put on her stomach. So I'm just doing like a whip stitch. Just give it some shape. And then I cut down the center to give it a little heart shape neckline. And then I just cut the back and mark where I want the snaps to go. I like to make all my clothes removable for my clients, even though they're typically not su supposed to change the clothes technically. It's more of a an art piece, but I still like to make sure that they're all removable. And I went through my curated fabrics and trimmings and came up with this white trim to use for the trim there. And just to kind of mimic the white, some of her the fish that she had had a lot of white patterns to them and I thought that that might reflect that. And then I loved this sort of sheer ribbon to use as a sort of a fin in the back of her neck. So I stitched that up and added a train. So onto the hair. So I thinned the hair out after I had rooted it and now I'm just adding a little bit of gel just to kind of smooth it out. And I'm separating it into sections that I'm going to pull into a uh, a braid. So with my first try of braiding I wasn't really happy with it so I went back and I did a um, sort of a knot on the top of the head and pulled the bangs over it just to give it a little bit of a bouffant look and then braided it down the side from there. So if you're a supporter over on my newly launched Patreon page, the full length version of this video is available for you there. Um, you can click in the description box below um, to get to my Patreon page and you can click there to see how to get early access to all of my videos, full length videos, tips and tricks, and a lot of monthly goodies, including a doll of the month that I'll be doing. And if you like this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you would do that as well. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it more than I can even say. Thank you so much for everything and hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.